Seven years ago, I was an operations manager at a small jewelry business with a bachelor's degree in political science. Today, I'm a senior applied scientist at Amazon building production, AI, and machine learning systems, and I earn about eight times as much as I did before I started this journey. Today's video is all about how I did it. I'll walk through how I learned the necessary skills, how I got my first internship, and what it took to get each new job and promotion along the way. Let's get right into it. Prior to this journey, I spent the first six years of my career doing a hodgepodge of different things, none of them technical. I first found out that data science and machine learning even existed when researching places to go for grad school. At the time, back in 2018, I was running a small jewelry business and I knew I needed to take some step forward in my career, but I had no idea what to do. My undergrad degree was in political science and I had worked in politics and for nonprofits in the past, but I burned out really quickly. I figured grad school made sense, and since I didn't have a clear vision, public policy research seemed like a good enough fit. I decided to get a master's degree from a public policy school in Berlin. As it happened, this school had some really relevant courses. I took courses in statistics, programming in R, machine learning, and deep learning, all with a social science focus. While my courses were great, I knew from having completed my bachelor's degree during the Great Recession that university education isn't enough to get a job. So I supplemented my studies with a ton of extra coursework books, and projects. I have a whole video breaking down the exact courses I took, which I'll link in the description. Beyond studying, I took every opportunity to develop my skills and network while in school. I was the TA for the advanced stats class, I started a data science club, I did a couple of data science competitions, and I volunteered with a data science nonprofit. All of that extra work paid off when I was applying for my first real job. I'll go into exactly how in a bit, but first, I needed to get some work experience. Here's how I got my first internship. As we all know, internships are hard to come by. There are very limited positions posted and they're competitive. So I found a loophole. I made a list of every company in Berlin that could conceivably have a data science team. And I just sent them cold emails asking if they had any internships available. Pretty much every single one ignored me, except one. They invited me for an interview and ultimately made a position for me. I interned there for about a year, and when I graduated, they offered me a full-time junior data scientist role. Up until this point, you'll notice that I've only talked about data science, but today I'm an applied scientist, which means I work on production machine learning systems. My role now is actually closer to a machine learning engineer. Here's where that part of the journey starts. After graduating, it was time to go home to the US. I started applying to jobs the traditional way, just on LinkedIn. I always track my job applications, so I know I applied to about 100 jobs over the course of several months before I got my first response that was not a rejection. That response was a take-home assignment for an entry-level machine learning-focused data scientist role at Coursera. I took the assignment, and I thought I completely bombed. But I guess not, because I was sent through to the next round with a recruiter. Throughout the interview process for this role, I studied an insane amount. My study doc was about 100 pages long, covering every concept I had learned in grad school and in my self-studies, every project I had ever done, and answers to potential behavioral questions. The preparation was pretty stressful since I knew this was really my one shot. One resource I really appreciated having throughout this whole journey was the learning app Brilliant. Brilliant is designed to be uniquely effective. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, a method proven to be six times more effective than just watching lecture videos. Brilliant starts you with mastering the foundations in topics like math, coding, and AI, then helps you level up to increasingly challenging problems. I used Brilliant extensively throughout my master's degree and in the early part of my career. I found the calculus and linear algebra content to be particularly helpful for me coming from a non-technical background. They've been adding lots of new content that's perfect for anyone looking to break into tech, whether that's as a software engineer, data scientist, or machine learning engineer. It's a good tool to give your mind kind of a daily workout with interactive courses in math, programming, science, AI, data, and more. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash gratitude driven. Scan the QR code on screen or check the link in the description. Brilliant's also given my viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Now all this studying did pay off in the interview. I had prepared so well that I had guessed one of the case studies and was able to give a really solid answer because I had already thought about it in advance. But the interview did not go perfectly. I was given a really challenging coding assignment where they asked me to code regularized logistic regression from scratch. At the time, that was completely outside of my abilities. So instead, I did two things. During the interview, I explained step-by-step step how regularized logistic regression works and all the details I could remember that were relevant for how to solve the problem. After the interview, I spent the weekend actually solving the problem, and I sent it back to my interviewer just asking for feedback. This was pre-ChatGPT, and there weren't really resources to copy, so it was a big project. I can't say for sure if these steps helped, but I got the offer. When they offered me the job, they mentioned that they appreciated all the extra work I had done volunteering and at the data science club. So it turned out that paid off too. 
Working at Coursera was my first exposure to production systems. The learning curve for the first several months was pretty steep. I spent weekends studying and putting in extra hours just to catch up. But after about six months, I was finally feeling confident. I made my first production model and was actually contributing significant work. I built a completely new deep learning model to replace one of the core models on my team, managed a few larger scale projects with a human labeling team, and ultimately got a promotion from data scientist one to data scientist two. It was about a year and a half after joining. I really enjoyed working at Coursera, but one thing I didn't love was the pay. Don't get me wrong, it was so much better than what I was making prior to working in tech, but I knew there were other companies paying quite a bit more. So I casually started my job search again. Turns out doing that job search was one of the best choices I've ever made financially. Let me share why. At Coursera, my official title was Data Scientist 2, comma, Machine Learning. In January 2022, I applied to a job at Twitch with the exact same title. I didn't hear back for a while. I think it wasn't until March that I did my first take-home SQL assignment, and I did the on-site interview in April. I prepared for this interview in much the same way as I had for Coursera. I studied for several weeks with hundreds of pages of study materials by this point. It paid off again because I had the good fortune of guessing a case study once more due to all of my prep work. Twitch is owned by Amazon, so they offered me about twice what I was making at Coursera, and I made the jump. My first few weeks on the job here were a lesson in how different the job titles are across companies. At Coursera, I was responsible for the entire machine learning lifecycle, from EDA to deployment and beyond. At Twitch, I was the first machine learning hire on my team, so there were no production models or even infrastructure set up to build them. By necessity, my first job at Twitch was to set up this infrastructure and scale the kind of work being done by the team. It was pretty challenging for me because I don't have a computer science or software engineering background. Plus, Amazon systems and security requirements are very complex. But after a few months, I did it, and we got our first models up and running. The work I was doing was very different from the other data scientists at Twitch, who tend to be more focused on analytics and experimentation. It turns out in hindsight, there was actually another job family that would have been a better fit for me from the get-go, applied science. Applied scientists at Amazon are kind of a mix between data scientists, machine learning engineers, and research scientists. The role is expected to be able to prototype and validate new algorithms and put those solutions into production. So after about a year and a half at Twitch, I moved job families so my title would more accurately reflect the kind of work I was already doing. But I stayed the same level, which was an L5. Getting to L6 or senior applied scientist was another challenge altogether. The role guidelines for an L6 applied scientist at Amazon are pretty intimidating. I was very unsure of if or when I would be able to get that promotion. So here's how I did it with a social science master's degree and mostly self-taught technical skills. Like I mentioned before, when I joined my team, we lacked the infrastructure needed for production ML systems. I took the initiative to establish this foundation, setting up the development environments, cloud infrastructure, designing machine learning pipelines, and creating documentation that ultimately enabled about 20 other data scientists to use these tools. With the foundation set up, I identified and led several projects that solved fundamental business challenges. For example, I developed a novel approach using LLMs to solve a content understanding problem that had previously been unsolvable. This work created significant business impact across multiple different teams. Throughout it all, I created comprehensive documentation, led training sessions, and actively mentored team members on new technologies and best practices. This helped establish me as a technical leader beyond my immediate responsibilities. The actual promotion process involved documenting this work, gathering feedback from stakeholders, and having my work reviewed by senior leaders. My manager was incredibly supportive throughout, helping me identify opportunities to demonstrate my impact, and advocating for me when the time came for the actual panel. The key was consistently delivering work that went above my level. I needed to be solving complex problems independently, leading technical initiatives that impacted multiple teams, and establishing myself as someone who could be trusted with senior level responsibilities before I actually had that title. And that's how I got to where I am today. There's still a lot more I wanna do in my career and a lot more I wanna share with all of you. Thanks to everyone for all of your support. I'll see you next time.